Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week and I hope y'all had a happy holiday. I just got back from Mexico after spending 10 days there. That's why I got a little bit of sun on my face, but I decided for this first video back, I'm going big. I got a customer's 372 XP Husk Varna chainsaw. He brought it in because he said it was not running right. Well, let me take you in and show you why. Now, like with all two cycle pieces of equipment, you're going to want to pull the plug first, look down into the cylinder and see what's going on, if you've got any scoring. And this one did, so we pulled the muffler. Let's see if I can get you down in there. And that thing is toast. If you can see all that up and down scoring there, that means that it got way too hot at some point and burnt the piston cylinder up. Now, once you got a piston and cylinder that's scored to this level, it's never going to have the correct air and fuel mixture, so it's never going to run right. You might be able to rev it full throttle and get through a cut, but it's never going to idle. So this saw is a commercial customer's, and he definitely wants to fix it because brand new, these saws go for $1,100 with a 20-inch bar, and that's, you know, plus tax. To fix this saw with a OEM piston and cylinder kit, it comes with the piston and the cylinder. It comes with a new needle bearing, a plug for your decompression trigger. It does not come with the mounting gasket. So I'm going to give you the part numbers for everything separate, but it's about 200 bucks for the piston and cylinder kit. Now you can get those aftermarket ones for about 40 to $70 from Farmer Tech, but if you're a commercial cutter, absolutely do not buy those. They will only last you about a year and you're going to wear them out. And now if you're a homeowner and you're only going to use your saw a few times a year and you've got a big, huge saw that, you know, it's going to cost a lot to replace, I tell people it's not a bad deal to get one of those. But if you're going to be cutting every day with this thing, you want to go OEM. So the part number for this piston and cylinder kit is a 575 two five five seven zero two and the mounting gasket that you'll want to get for the cylinder is a five zero three nine six one five zero one so i know this looks like a gigantic job of tearing this entire thing apart and putting this brand new piston and cylinder in and if you have another chainsaw that you're doing it to the principles are pretty much the same so this video will help but hopefully i can save you some time money and frustration because if i can do it you can do it so first things first, this thing needs a little blow job because it's dirty. All right, so that is a little better. Spit shinder. Let's tear her apart. So first things first, I'm pulling out my Owl Tools Torque Bit set. This is T7 through T40. I am not sponsored by anybody, but I recommend it because I bought it, I use it, and it works. So, and it's not really expensive. So you're gonna pull out your T27 for, um, most chainsaws have T27, sometimes a T25 in it. And you're going to want to put it into your battery operated power tool because there is a lot of screws that you're going to be taking out. So I'm going to remove the handle and the top covers. Alright, so I'd already removed the muffler, so I don't have to worry about that, but I am going to be removing the carburetor, so I do need to make sure that it has no fuel in it. Got to dump that out. Also, anytime that you change out a new piston and cylinder, you want to go ahead and put a carburetor kit in that carburetor. You want everything to start fresh, because you never know if that could have been the reason that it got burned up.
go. All right, so we got the cylinder off and that was pretty painless, but I wanna go over the piston with you so I can tell my customer exactly why they're saw burnt up. So some things I do want you to notice is the air filter looked almost brand new. It was pretty clean. It looked like they've been taking good care of it. There wasn't a bunch of debris built up in the air filter base. It looked fine and there is nothing wrong with the intake side. It is perfect. I do want you to notice that the rings on this side are still springy. They're not stuck. And while we're here, we want to look down inside. We notice that there's still oil a little bit on the bottom. The underside of the piston still has an oily residue. So let's look at the other side. The exhaust side is not so pretty. The top piston ring is stuck inside of the piston. You can see all that up and down scoring. And I'm going to attribute this to a lean C's failure. Um, you could really see that whenever the top of the piston looks so burnt and crusty like that, really dry. Um, lean seeds failures are caused by either not having enough fuel or too much air going through the engine. Too little fuel entering the engine can be caused by over lean carburetor adjustments, dirty fuel filters, stiff carb metering diaphragms, or debris inside the carburetor. Usually with lean seas failures like this, you will see all this scoring on the exhaust port, but the other side on the intake will be perfectly fine. So let's take this piston off the rod, oil her up, put her back together. So first thing I'm going to do is take the spring clip out. While I'm doing this, I guess I can tell you a story. When I went to Mexico, we go, we try to go every year and take the family to go fishing. And this year I did not catch a gigantic Wahoo like I did last year, which was pretty awesome, but I made up for it in quantity and assortment. I caught a bunch of grouper and trigger fish and uh, red snappers. We had plenty to eat all week. Had an excellent time until we decided to come home. And that's when everything went to boot. So American Airlines, decided to uh, take it upon themselves to change our flight while we were there and only gave us one hour to get there, land, get off the plane, go through customs, go pick up our luggage, recheck our luggage, go back through security, and then catch our plane in an hour. Needless to say, because the TSA decided to stop me at uh, the uh, security and check my coffee for bomb making materials, uh, and don't make fun of this. This, you know, my piston pin is stuck. This is the easiest way for me to get it out. I just give it a little taps. It's something the right size there, you know. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. See, it's coming out. <laughs> and uh, even though our plane didn't go off until 6.31 and we got there at 6.26, they already were buttoned up and ready to roll. So they wouldn't let us on the plane when we went to find out what we're supposed to do or, you know, do they have another plane later? No, that plane was canceled. So they probably gave our plane, you know, our seats to somebody on standby and just boned out. So we needed to get home from Dallas to, you know, Hot Springs, Arkansas. So we decided to rent a car for seven of us and drive home at, you know, seven o'clock in the evening. Of course, the airport's closed at midnight. So you can't get your luggage or return the car. So we had to go the next day and do all that. So we got our piston off. We are going to take this roller bearing out of here because the uh, new piston kit comes with a new one. And let's start oiling stuff up and putting it back together. All right, so the new piston comes with everything. We've got new clips and that's always important whenever you're going to change one out, even if you're using a lot of old parts, always change your clips out because you don't want that to be your issue because they do wear out. So we are going to first start up with oil and everything. So you're gonna bring out just some two cycle oil, try to use some good stuff. And we're going to first lube up the bottom end just a little bit. And really, gonna be quite liberal with this oil. I mean, it might smoke. It, in fact, I'm saying might. It's gonna smoke when we start this thing up because it's gonna burn off all this old oil. But that, I guess I should have. <laughs> I don't have this. Do I gonna rip it? Yeah, okay. Get a little more oil 
I mean, we're just gonna, we're lubing it up, guys. You don't wanna burn this thing up already after you just fixed it all, so. All right, get our piston here and get the new pin out. And whenever you put a new piston in, there is an arrow on the top that needs to be pointed towards the exhaust, so. Come on down with it. Just gotta hit the honey hole. Come on. Go to your home. Oh. So close. So close. Oh, now everything's so oily. Okay. Arrowhead. This really is like the hardest part. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> Just lining it up. But once you get it in there, I want. I love to say, "Oh no, this is super simple." But it just really isn't. You never know. Okay, let's put our pins in. And what I did just notice is, even though it came with two piston pin clips, um, they already put one in this side. Now, aftermarket ones do not have that. So <laughs> be wary that you will need pins or clips for both sides. But So all I've got to do is put it on the left side. So that's pretty sweet. It's storming outside. And these are not fun. And it probably comes with an extra because um, the chances of you losing the first one are, you know, pretty plausible. So we're going to start it. Let me get my needle nose. Oh, oh, mm, right in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I do see that I have a little bit of this gasket left on here that I didn't notice. Go in with this without cutting my impulse line. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and lube up our piston. Underneath all of its crevices. That's good. Grab our gasket. Does not go that way. Make sure to put your gasket on before you forget, because, oh, I did have it backwards. There we go, that all lines up. Sweet. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get my old cylinder. I'm gonna take off the intake boot, the screws, and the uh, isolator spring, so we can put it on our new one. Take boot back on here. Make sure it's nice and snug as a bug. And 
And once again, I want to oil up my cylinder. So needless to say, after the trip we took and being stranded in Las Vegas an extra four days over Christmas last year when Southwest canceled 18,000 flights, and mine being one of them, I'm not going to fly for a while. So if y'all have any um, suggestions about RVs, bring it. Okay, so we've got our screw in here that has the plug in, and we're going to go ahead and put our other screws. No, no, I'm going to hold on to all that. I'm going to just start that one screw and then I'm going to, because I don't want to mess up my gasket. Now, on this particular uh, cylinder, it has a tapered part right here to where I can slide it over the rings sort of easy. Um, if it didn't, if it had just a blunt end right here, you would need actually a compressor to um, you know, compress the rings to get it down. So. ring one. Let's get ring two. Oh yeah, there we are. Just make sure our gasket's lined up there. Making sure your gasket is lined up is important because you don't want to booger it up. Double check on them holes. Making sure they're lined up with my gasket. Looks good. Put my screws in. Try not to drop it down by the flywheel. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Oh, it's coming down out there now. So we got the cylinder back on. I need to uh, put a carburetor kit in my carburetor. I'm not going to bore you with that because I know y'all have seen it a million times. I will leave a link right up above if you need to see me doing a carburetor kit on one of these. But I'm going to uh, get it done, throw it back on, and catch you up. Uh, to put the carburetor back in on this one, other ones are not so tasking. But I'm going to remove this plastic air intake just to get it out of the way. Because... I don't want to be prying on these little plastic parts. It's got little nipples that you need to make sure that the carburetor fits on the nipples on the air intake. Just like that. Reattach our lines. Bring this back in. And get this rubber piece around it. Make sure the carburetor's still lined up. You're going to reattach your, your throttle cable here. Easiest way, just push it on down, stick it in its little slot. It's good. It's working. I need to line all this back up. Screws in here. We're good to go. Go ahead and reattach our choke.
Now in the old cylinder, it had a decompression uh, valve in it, but I'm not going to put his old one in his new cylinder because I don't trust them. A lot of times they can leak and lead to burning up your cylinder. So I'm going to, it, this kit comes with a plug. So I'm going to buy him another one to put in it, but I don't have one today. And I do want to see this bad boy run. So I'm going to put the plug in here today. We're getting so close. Who's ready to see this thing run? I am. It's gonna be dark though. I mean, the sun sets here at five now, so it's dark, rainy, and cold. Yay. Also, word to the wise, Husqvarna's, um, they're notorious for the mufflers vibrating off of the chainsaw. So I highly recommend if you take your muffler off ever to put a little Loctite on it when you put it back, so. I went ahead and popped in a new fuel filter because I don't want that to be an issue of how it could have burned up. And let's fill her up. And one thing I do want to do, I want to take out a little bit of gas. Got my little sucker here. I do leave these in the description box below if you don't have these. It's super awesome to just have one of these laying around so you can get down to the bottom of your gas tank, suck a little up, see if you got any nasty stuff in there or water. I highly recommend keeping these in your toolbox. And I'm going to put some down in. I'm going to flood out the cylinder is what I'm going to do. Because I want this thing to pop off as soon as possible. I don't want to be pulling on it forever. So I'm going to go in through the intake. You can go either way through your spark plug hole or through your intake. Just give it a good go like that with your throttle press so it's getting by that flapper and we're gonna put our air filter on I'm gonna bundle up because it's cold outside and we're gonna go try the starter all right guys so I already pulled her a couple times just to make sure that I could actually pull this saw without the decompression trigger and I can but I didn't want to start her up without y'all first I do want to let you know though if you are putting a new piston and cylinder on anything there is a break-in period that you have to do this is not like buying it from the big box store where you can just buy it take it home start it and cut some wood those saws have already been test run at the factories all of the ones that you buy and this has not so that you've got to be able to seat the rings and it's a whole process there's lots of YouTube videos on it. I haven't made one yet, but it would make this video way too long for me to go into that, but I will eventually make one on that. But let's go ahead and start her up. I'm going to let her idle for at least a minute and a half and see what she does. Oh, I used all the gas. There we go. It would have helped if I would have had something with me to adjust the carburetor while I was running it. Let's do over.
gonna do any more to her. I want her to sit. We're gonna do the whole ring seat and thing and she's gonna be good to go and I'll be able to give her back to my customer. Realized I was way too bent over to be uh, in the camera so I had to pause there. But guys, I just wanna say thanks again for tuning into Chicanic. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me on Instagram at the Real Chicanic or find me at Chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day.